Hey to all my YouTube followers, I'm going to make a video today that's going to be a bit different than all my previous videos. Today I'm wanting to reminisce and look back at some of my favorite videos I've made through the years that are on my YouTube channel. Now, with every video that I make, I try to make sure that everything that I share is accurate and that I film everything as best as I can. So... I'm just going to go ahead and focus, like I mentioned, on the videos that I made that are my personal favorite that I had a fun time filming or doing research on, and also share some stories that have happened while I was filming. Now, before I begin, I want to explain the interest that I have in cemeteries. Now, the cemeteries that I go to are very old. And the people that are buried there have been deceased for well over a hundred years. And I think to myself, wow, you know, these people, of course, were once alive. And they lived in this city. They had a family. They had a living. They had life events that occurred while they were on this earth. And then one day they died. And I find it really interesting when I can find information about these people that are deceased and also sharing pictures of what they looked like when they were alive and also sharing the story of how they ended up in their grave. So to me, that is why I enjoy making these videos and sharing it with you guys. Okay, so to kick off this video, we're going to take a look at my first ever cemetery video which was my tour of the Chinese graveyard. And that video was uploaded on October 12th, 2017. Now, prior to this video, I've been to the cemetery countless times. I had a big interest in the paranormal in the 2000s when I was a young teenager. And back in the day, this cemetery was really creepy compared to how creepy it is today. And the reason why I say it was creepy back then was because the road that this cemetery is on was totally pitch black. There were no street lights or anything. And it was just a creepy experience going to this cemetery back in the day. So on October 12, 2017, I was in the area and I passed by this Chinese graveyard. And I stopped and I told myself, you know what, I'm going to make a video of this place explain the urban legend and what have you. And there were other videos on YouTube about this Chinese graveyard, but they were just paranormal investigation type of videos. So I parked in the front of the gate, got out of my truck, and I did my first take on this cemetery. And it was a mess. I walked through there and I was trying to tell the story, but I was kind of getting flustered and I was kind of just forgetting, you know, parts and pieces of this urban legend. And while I was filming, out of nowhere, towards the back of the cemetery, this dog came out and started barking at me. And at first he was kind of walking slow, but he was kind of picking up speed walking towards me. So I decided to just stop filming and turn around and get back into my vehicle. And I wish I still had that footage. I don't know what happened to it. And I was just kind of discouraged, like, oh, man, you know, this video is not going as planned. But after a while, I waited. And I told myself, okay, I, got, I think I got the story straight. I want to go ahead and go back in. Hopefully that dog doesn't bother me. So I go back in. I tell the story as best as I can. And then out of nowhere, my phone says that you're running out of memory. And I told myself, I know I have plenty of memory on my phone. So was it the spirits messing with my phone? Who knows? So that video really kicked off my channel and started, you know, making me want to do more cemetery videos. And one more thing about this Chinese graveyard. As I mentioned in this video, the cemetery is notorious for witchcraft rituals. So... I wanted to do another video on this cemetery. And on October 10th, 2020, I visited the cemetery and I was looking for objects that may have been used 
for rituals and witchcraft. And while I was there, I kept on hearing three knocks. And they say that three knocks is some type of evil spirit mocking the Holy Trinity. And I thought to myself, it can't be gunshots because who shoots in threes? And also, no one hammers in threes. And I was filming, and I was towards the back of the cemetery. And I really wanted to capture those knocks on my phone or on my camera. And once I heard those knocks starting again, I stopped. And then out of nowhere, this gust of wind came. And then before I started talking again, there was a whisper saying, hey. And at the time while I was filming, I didn't hear it until I was listening to what I was recording. And then I heard that whisper saying, hey. And this video is on my YouTube channel. And it, you be the judge, honestly. I, I did not edit it. I didn't do any special effects. I'm always by myself when I tour these cemeteries. It was, to me, that was a an EVP, if you will. And I've been to many cemeteries. I never feel uneasy. The Chinese graveyard, however, is the only graveyard where I feel like something is there or there's just some kind of vibe to that place. Really creepy. So my next video is the Espada Cemetery. And this video was uploaded on October 12th, 2018. Now, how I found this cemetery was through Google Maps. Now, there have been rumors. I don't know if anybody knows about this, but there are rumors that there are graves across where the ghost tracks are. And I'm not talking about the San Juan Cemetery. I'm talking about just some random graves across the Chinese, I mean, I'm sorry, the ghost tracks. And anyways, I was looking at Google Maps, trying to see if I could find any graves there, but I couldn't. But then I stumbled upon this Espada Cemetery. So I wanted to check it out for myself. Now, Espada Cemetery is located near Mission Espada, and it is located on a road called Cemetery Road. Now, when you drive up on this road, you see maybe one or two houses on your left before you get to the main entrance of the cemetery. And then at the main entrance of the cemetery, you see this burial vault here. And I thought that was kind of weird. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Chinese graveyard is the only graveyard where I felt uneasy. Well, with this cemetery, I felt fine other than the fact that I felt like I was being watched by someone, not a spirit. By someone, and that was the person who lives at the house right next to the cemetery. So that was the only reason why I felt uneasy while filming here. And while I'm making this video, a viewer mentioned to me in the comment section that the person who lives at the house next to the cemetery watches over this place to make sure no vandalism takes place, which makes sense. And also, they mentioned that at night, there are boars that walk around this area, so it's very dangerous to walk around this cemetery at night. I went back to the Espada Cemetery about a year ago, this time at night. I know I'm crazy. I was driving down Cemetery Road with my high beams on, and then out of nowhere appeared the front gate and that burial vault. It is still there. And what's really crazy is that with my high beams on, you still can't see beyond that gate. You don't see any tombstones, no graves, nothing. Any other person wouldn't even know there was a graveyard there if they were driving down this road, other than the fact that they were driving down a road called Cemetery Road. My next video that I want to talk about isn't a cemetery video, but my first ever urban exploration video where I trespassed on private property, and that is the abandoned San Antonio Speedway on Highway 16 South. Now this video was uploaded on May 4th, 2020, and I remember this video because it was really hot, <laughs> and for some reason I took a harder way to get inside this abandoned racetrack than going through the entrance 
on Highway 16. And I think I did this now that I look back at it because I didn't want to get caught. And I guess that's smart on my part. And I really like this video because I started doing a little bit of editing on my videos from this point. And I found some clips of the Speedway back when it was in operation. And you see the race cars racing around the racetrack. And then it just stops and it goes to present day abandoned racetrack. And it was really fun looking through this place. Um, as you can see here, I was walking through the middle section here up to the announcer's box. Now at the time, I wasn't thinking about rotten wooden planks. You know, it, it, I, it was fine. You know, walking up here was fine. It felt sturdy. It felt fine. But when I was coming back down, I didn't show this or I cut it out on this video. I was going down diagonally through the bleachers for some reason, instead of going through the middle aisle in between these uh, seats, the bleachers here. And I was walking through the bleachers and I took one step and my left leg went through this rotten piece of wood. And luckily my other leg was standing on a piece of wood that was still sturdy. So I didn't fall completely into this rotten wooden bleacher. So I was able to get my leg out of this area and luckily I didn't fall and I just got a few scratches. I was fine. So I just stepped back and then I safely made my way down to like the concrete base of where these bleachers are and worked my way down into the concession stand area. <laughs> so I'll, I'll never forget that experience while touring this abandoned place and remember everybody safety first. So going back to the cemetery video, I want to talk about the Schulmeyer Cemetery located in the northeast side of San Antonio on Wetmore Road. This video was uploaded on July 16th, 2020. Now, a viewer on my channel told me about this cemetery. And I remember years prior hearing about a, a graveyard being behind this wooded area next to this train track here. And... I looked again on Google Maps and I did see something this time that resembled a graveyard. And with the GPS and me walking through this area, I was able to find the location of this graveyard. And after I hopped the fence, I made a tour of this graveyard. And it was really interesting learning about the Schulmeyers and learning about German immigrants that resided in the northeast side of San Antonio. So my next favorite video would have to be the truth behind the abandoned insane asylum in the far south side of San Antonio. This video was uploaded on October 10th, 2021. This was a very fun video to do research on and to put all that information together. And like most San Antonio locals, they know this place as the abandoned insane asylum where the crazy farmer across the street shoots up his gun to scare people away. And I've always been interested in these abandoned buildings ever since my younger days in the 2000s. And I remember going there late at night and before it was turned into a training facility for the sheriff's department there was just a big mound of dirt at the front entrance and it was more of like a enter if you dare kind of thing. And this video, I found out so much information and the history didn't begin and end at these abandoned buildings. It began way back into the 1850s and it took me to the present day intersection of Mulberry and North St. Mary street where once upon a time at that intersection, there was a poor farm, a tuberculosis hospital. I'm sure I said that correctly this time, it's unlike my video. <laughs> and there was a pauper's graveyard there. And sometime in the early 1900s, you know, the city and the people that lived in that area wanted all those undesirable people away from the city. So they moved these people to present-day Southern Road and Farm Road, 
and moving them into a facility known as the Home for the Aged. And on this farm, having a school, a reform school for juvenile delinquent boys who would work this farm and keep up with the buildings. And it was really interesting finding out stories of what took place here where there was a boy poisoned under mysterious circumstances to another boy being killed by a farmhand. I really enjoy this video because it has history, mystery, and graveyards. And we talk about the pauper's graveyard that was on the intersection of Mulberry North St. Mary's being moved from one cemetery to another cemetery. And this other cemetery was known as City Cemetery Number 7. And sometime in the 1940s, that, was, that whole cemetery was moved again to, I believe, the San Jose Burial Park. So really interesting about these people that just kept on being moved from one location to another after they were deceased for quite some time. And at this home for the aged or abandoned insane asylum, if you want to call it that still, there was a graveyard there as well. And after this, after these buildings closed down, they exhumed the bodies that were there and moved them to another cemetery, which I'm not sure which cemetery they were moved to. And it's possible that bodies were left behind at the cemetery where the abandoned insane asylum or home for the aged is. Also, it's possible that bodies were left behind at the intersection of Mulberry and North St. Mary's where the old pauper's graveyard was. It's possible that a building was built on top of somebody's grave or a road was paved above someone's grave. We'll never know. And to me, that's really interesting to think about. So the last video I want to talk about is the history on the Griffin, the Hockley, the Clay, the Winters, and the Jackson families. And this video was uploaded very recently. This video was uploaded on February 19, 2022. And this too was a video that I wanted to do for quite some time. The significance of these families to me was very interesting because the families date back to the late 1860s, early 1870s. And these families were African Americans who were once slaves. And once they were freed, they made a life for themselves in the northeast side of San Antonio. You know, they purchased land, they raised cattle, they made a community for themselves, and they also had a community cemetery and a family cemetery. And it was really interesting focusing on each family, like the Griffins, the Hockleys, the Clays, and then the Winters and the Jackson. And hearing the stories of the people who rediscovered this information or hearing from the family descendants themselves about their stories on their ancestors. And then also learning about the mistreatment of, for example, the winners Jackson cemetery where the deceased people that were laid to rest there were moved in 1986 without a permit, without family permission to one mass grave at Holy Cross Cemetery. If you haven't seen the video, I totally recommend checking it out. I did as best as I can to put all that information together in one video and break it into three sections that talks about the Griffin Family Cemetery, the Hockley Clay Cemetery, and the Winters Jackson Cemetery. It's really informative. I learned so much from all the history that I read and all the interviews that I watched. And I think it's really good uh, history. So definitely check it out. And that pretty much wraps up me looking back at my favorite videos on my YouTube channel through the years. I want to take this moment to thank my current 779 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Y'all are amazing. From your kind words to your suggestions to your informative comments this channel would not be where it's at. And I know that 779 subscribers isn't much, but to me, it is plenty. And without y'all, I probably would have just abandoned this YouTube channel a long time ago. And I wish that I could upload every week 
but I have a career that requires me to travel on occasions and I just don't have that luxury to go out and explore and film and do my research, edit, and then upload on my YouTube channel. I wish I could do that, but time just isn't on my side. So I appreciate your patience. This channel is still going to keep on going, don't get me wrong. I will put out as many videos as I can, and maybe this channel will one day get to 1,000 subscribers. That, hey, that, that'd that be cool with me. <laughs> so, you know, a, a big thank you to, to y'all. And also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should definitely follow me on there for cemetery content and updates on future videos. Also, the people on Instagram that follow me on there, y'all are awesome. I love hearing your stories about abandoned cemeteries. You know, there are some cemetery enthusiasts that follow me on there as well. And I just, I love hearing the stories and I say, keep them coming. And Instagram is also the best way to contact me if you have any information about abandoned cemeteries or any stories about anything. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there and I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching.